welcome. This is Shakti Korola Nevrin to your weekly forecast. So I strongly believe that uh, if we're prepared and if we know what's going on in the heavens and what the, the celestial frequencies are coming at us, wanting to be integrated in our life, that then we really have choices. So that's my intentions with these forecasts to prepare you and uh, of course this is a pretty short one so uh, little astro bites for you but uh, you can also uh, go to my youtube channel where you can see longer videos okay so we starting out into the coming week with having to face uh, a lot of areas in our life where we feel helpless, where uh, uh, we have to face violence and uncontrollable circumstances. So um, I hope I will make a little bit astrological sense out of what's uh, going on. So um, we always have kind of the moon entering through four signs going through the week. So we will talk about that, but also include other important uh, uh, astrological um, manifestations. So uh, consciousness and self-reflection. I, I strongly believe that that's at the center of how we are uh, creating our life. Andrea, hello, good to see you. I'm glad you made it. So feel free, everybody uh, joining or listening to this forecast later to leave me comments and I will get back and, and answer any questions later. So uh, I would love to hear your sun and sun sign and ascendant and moon sign if you know it. So we have a little bit of an idea who, who is out here and coming together with our passion for astrology. Okay, so... Um, Moon is entering Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, and then stepping into a whole new circle of evolution into Aries. So that's kind of the moon activity throughout the week. We still have Venus and Mercury in Leo, which will be joined this week with the sun moving into the next sign for a month. So, so that will shift a lot of the, the underlying background energies. So remember, the, the sun is symbolizing consciousness and uh, our understanding, how we as a person shine into the world. So in Leo, it's a fire sign, the sign of the king and the queens. So uh, with three planets in Leo, this will be really in the forefront for us as an individual. How do we shine? Uh, how do we do that and share our unique skills with the world? And uh, then, of course, in, in the bigger picture, uh, uh, it depends where that sun in Leo is in your personal chart and how it activates certain planets in your chart. This is where that energy will, will flow in. Okay, uh, we have still a waxing Saturn square getting closer to Neptune. And we still have four retrograde planets, Saturn, Pluto, Neptune, Chiron. So um, we're going to talk about all that. All right, Michelle, thanks for sharing. <laughs> okay, so one thing I wanted to start out before we get into the specifics of each day of the week, I wanted to, to talk about all this violence in the world we're facing right now. So um, I write an interesting article about that whenever the retrograde motion of Mars is ending, which has happened end of last month, then uh, usually there is some violent uh, war terrorist kind of uh, manifestation. So one of the strong examples is 9-11 that happened uh, after the, the Mars retrograde was over. So I thought that was kind of an interesting perspective. So sometimes really 
uh, those shifts in the heavens really manifest in a, in, a, in a specific event. It's not like it's happening all the time, but when those more outstanding uh, extreme events are happening, then uh, we do have often certain actualizations, certain transits uh, pushing into our experience. So uh, also this retrograde motion of Mars ending is kind of interesting because it was in connection with Uranus. And Uranus, a rebel, a revolutionary, so Mars, a warrior, uh, uh, in tandem with uh, uh, the revolutionary, you can imagine there, that's hot, there is stuff happening. So both Mars and Uranus lingering around 23 to 25 degrees of Scorpio and Aries. So we almost have two months of a long twinkling between the two of the, the most violent planets in the sky. So if we run that back to what has happened, there was an assassination in England, another assassination uh, of this voice singer in Orlando, then the nightclub tragedy, then uh, the putsch in Istanbul, West Bank, Kenya, Colorado, Bangladesh, uh, minor, minor violences in Denver, Chicago, San Jose. So there's a lot, lot going on there, out there. And of course, as an individual, we might feel kind of helpless in the face of all what's happening out there in the world. So I truly believe that the personal PowerPoint we all hold is who we are in our personal life, how we express ourselves, how we treat others, and how much uh, we are able to contribute to, to the life of others. So this is where our personal PowerPoint is. And part of my intention with astrology is to teach you to become very aware of where your personal power lies and, and how to, to, to deal with that and express that. So, um, let's see. Okay, so um, my intentions with doing this forecast is uh, mainly to prepare you for what's happening and to raise your consciousness so you have more choices, because that's really what evolutionary astrology is about. It's uh, teaching about choices. So it's not uh, an idea that we are imprisoned by the planets and, and their meaning. But if we know what's going on, it gives us choices. So astrology, in my perspective, is not about determinism. It's about inner growth. It's about conscious application of who you are and, and uh, what you know how to bring that to the world. So, so astrology for me is really a spiritual journey. It's a, a journey of self-reflection, of, of waking up. And of course, uh, if you're able to, to work with your personal chart, it will give you a lot of hints and ideas how you can flower more in your life and, and bring your potential in a more expressive way. Okay, so I asked you to give me your sun, ascendant and moon sign. So my sun is very end of Taurus. Uh, my moon is in Aquarius, the rebel. And my ascendant is Gemini, the talker, the speaker, the, the communicator, the storyteller. So uh, here I am <laughs> talking a lot and uh, sharing all this information with you. And uh, I, I hope that as part of these online forecasts that we will create an online community, like an astrological tribe, where we uh, uh, become more self-actualized in, in knowing who we are and how to ride the wave. So as you know, I, I live on Maui, so we are totally into surfing, surfing the wave, and there's no way you can fight a wave, so you better learn how to surf it. So I really like that about astrology, that it gives me 
uh, uh, the awareness how to do that and the skills how to uh, surf the wave. Yes, yes, yes. I love to hear that. The tribe, Andrea. Good, good. Okay, so um, I would like you to go to my uh, website, mauiastrologyreading.com, if you haven't signed up for your newsletter yet, because that way I can keep you in the loop with whatever forecasts and events uh, I'm doing. So that's uh, the, the easiest way to stay connected. And then, of course, here on my Facebook pages. Okay, so let's see in specific what's going on this week. So today or tonight, uh, depending on where you are, Moon is entering Capricorn at 12.33 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So uh, Moon in Capricorn is kind of a little bit on the dry side. Capricorn the Elder. Capricorn is very organized, very grounded, very earthy. Uh, but a little dry. So uh, it's kind of uh, a beginning to uh, uh, prepare us for the next step when the moon is entering uh, Aquarius on Tuesday, which is a big deal because then it's also the full moon. So, so before that, we will have Monday moon conjuncting Pluto. So moon and Capricorn conjuncts Pluto. So Pluto is always uh, known as a god of the underworld, a god of death and rebirth, and the god of deep changes. So, so there's this moment in time when we will have deeper access to our unconsciousness. So uh, Moon rules our unconsciousness and Pluto is a god of the underworld. So it helps us to go really, really deep. It could also mean that uh, we we are more reactive than usual. Somebody pushes a button and 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 we react. So uh, whenever the the outer planets uh, or the more violent planets are involved in a transit, then it's really helpful to to practice that inner witness. Because when we are aware of what we're feeling and what's happening in there, then we have a little space. So we just we, we are not just reactive to, to circumstances. So the full moon on Tuesday, the 19th, is uh, kind of a very emotionally and stressful full moon because... Uh, it will be in a in a T square with Sun and Uranus. So whenever T square is is in the picture, it's a strong energetic connection. Remember, the aspects are kind of uh, uh, energetic channels and connecting to planets and the principles they represent. So, so the full moon, which opens us to to feeling fuller and uh, uh, having a more conscious connection to our inner world, then is an opposition with the sun, uh, which represents consciousness and how we do things and uh, how we actually step into life. And Uranus uh, the, throws in the stick into the wheel. So Uranus, the rebel, the breakthrough into another level of, of consciousness. So uh, Tuesday might be quite intense for all of us. And uh, Monday, the moon conjunction with Pluto kind of guides us into that. So it's going to be a strong beginning of the week. Then on Wednesday, uh, things are calming down a little. The moon is opposing Venus and Mercury. Um, so uh, Venus, the goddess of love, Mercury, the, the communicator, the, the messenger of the gods. So that just means we, we are opening to, to dimensions of the heart. We're understanding more about that, which in general is, is a good thing, I believe. Thursday, moon square Mars. So uh, again, whenever Mars is in the picture, we have the low end possibility of violence and abuse and uh, things happening in a very intense way. Here's a connection with Moon is that we feel things emotionally very strongly, which uh, holds the potential that we are very uh, 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 that we 
react very strongly to to something coming into our fields or circumstances or somebody saying something to us. So, um, hi Joyce, thanks for sharing. So, um, so again, Moon Square Mars is emotional, is expressive, is uh, reactive. So again, uh, cultivating the inner witness will help on Thursday. Then Friday, the 22nd, Moon enters Pisces at 1.35 p.m. And then gonna uh, conjunct Neptune. So Pisces on one in, in one way to look at it is the last of one sign of evolution. Uh, Pisces is about uh, what is in the invisible realm, is all that is, is that higher consciousness perspective. And uh, when the moon enters Pisces, there is an emotional opening into something bigger. And uh, a good practice, especially with a conjunction with Neptune, is to really celebrate how we can reach into something bigger, into the ocean of consciousness, to get inspired, to be in the zone, to feel bigger than our tiny, tiny little ego perspective. So uh, I believe Friday is a wonderful day to, to pay attention to how you do that, how to reach into that higher... Uh, a wisdom perspective and to be inspired. So meditation, taking your dog for a walk, uh, spending some time on your own so you actually have the quiet and solitude to reach in into the ocean of consciousness. Uh, I know Friday is still the end of the week, but you might be able to, to build in that time a little. And then Saturn, Moon conjuncts Chiron. Whenever there is a connection between Chiron and the Moon, uh, it's always an invitation for healing. And uh, I do believe healing happens mainly through consciousness and conscious choices and shifts we, we have available to us. So uh, Saturday holds that promise that uh, you can... Uh, um, heal yourself and 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 shift by uh, choosing so. Then next Sunday we're gonna get together again, and uh, then Moon enters Aries. So that's kind of the biggest shift from one sign into the other, because uh, Aries is the beginning of one circle of evolution, and uh, Pisces was the end of one circle of evolution. So the shift from Pisces to Aries is uh, the most profound one. So Pisces, all gear taught uh, the oneness, the ocean of consciousness, something bigger. And then Aries brings back the intention into who am I in the world? What do I need? What do I want? So in a way you could say it's more um, ego uh, uh, oriented, but uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing because we all need to have a sense of, of ego, a sense of self before we actually can pounder to uh, transcend the ego. So in uh, many of our spiritual uh, traditions, certain teachings are only made available to people who have lived kind of uh, into the middle of their life and they have reached a certain maturity on their level of ego in their sense of self and then you kind of get ready to to take the next step so so there's no connection okay here we're back so there's nothing wrong with uh, uh, having an ego having needs standing up for those uh, and uh, celebrating that unique being you are mm -hmm. So um, now is a good time if you guys have questions. Uh, so you can type them in. Do you have any recommendations of gemstones that will assist with the strong energies this week? Oh, Andrea, that's a great question. Thank you. Yeah, you know I'm this expert with uh, gemstones and how to use them because they're kind of holds a perfect frequency in a total balanced way uh, of certain planetary uh, principles. So uh, we can use gemstones uh, to support our, our journey. 
we can especially use them to support and balance areas in our charts where we have challenges and we can use them like you pointing towards here when there are uh, energies coming at us and we want to be more uh, conscious and prepared and uh, being able to to balance and harmonize those energies so for this week let's go back here um well i would want to mainly balance pluto uranus and mars energies i would imagine so mars stones are all red stones they correlate to the first chakra um, so garnet would be one stone uh, it, it helps to balance our physical energy and ground us uh, then there is uh, a fire opal uh, which is more helping transforming energies and uh, then all the opals are connected with the outer planets. So opal, the stone of transformation, is a Pluto, Uranus, and Neptune stone, which relates very well back to, to this week's energies and where we feel challenged. So if you have an opal, it's a, a, a wonderful way to, if you have a piece of jewelry with an opal, to wear it this week. Or if you have a loose opal that you... Uh, I'll carve a little time out and uh, meditate with it. So whenever you meditate with gemstones, what you 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 can do, you lay down, and if it's only one stone you're meditating with, you put it on your third eye, and uh, it will be a wonderful way to shift your energies and your consciousness in in a very fast way. And especially for people who have uh, down into uh, meditation, uh, gemstones can be wonderful and, and helpful. So if you have more gemstones to meditate with, you can place them anywhere on your body. And of course, especially if you know through the colors to which chakra they correlate. So you could put the, the pink or green gemstones on your heart, the blue one on your throat chakra and so on. Uh, Rock crystal uh, are always a uh, kind of wonderful stone to put on your body for meditations. Or if you have bigger crystals, you can put them around your body to create a, a field of consciousness. So if you haven't had the experience with gemstones in meditation, uh, I would invite you to play around with it. It's a wonderful way and you will feel that it's much easier to meditate and go deep and sink into that a more expanded dimension of consciousness with the help of gemstones. Of course, if you do know your personal healing stones and uh, you can find out about your uh, love stone when you go to my website and sign up for my newsletter, there you get your... Okay, I hope this is not always interrupting. It seems like my phone is acting up here today. Uh, so anyway, if you know your personal gemstones, that goes a long way if you know which stone can balance which planet in your chart. So I have created something I call the Gemstone Profile. For 20 bucks, you can get a whole list and descriptions of your main healing gemstones. So uh, thanks for asking. That was a good question. So, um, okay, any other questions, my dears? Otherwise, I would think uh, we're done for the day. I don't want to, to make it too long to take too much away from your Sunday. Uh, Andrea, would you also have some recommendation for really gaining the depths? Well, I imagine you mean the depths in meditation, the depths in relaxing, the monkey mind, uh, the busy mind. And I mean, we're all so multitasking and out there and doing all these things simultaneously, being on the phone, looking at our computer, all that stuff. So, um, ah, the depths of this week. Okay. So, um, I think the strongest idea I want you to focus on is to cultivate the inner witness because this is a way how you step out of that identification with thoughts and identifications with with emotions 
and in a way when we identify with that we identify with the story and uh, it's often imprisoning us in that so whenever we step into the witness and we are conscious of a connection with something bigger than the story bigger than our our uh, ego perspective this is when the prison door opens and beautiful things can happen so just play with that uh, witness uh, function inside of yourself uh, i mean we all have that it's just like uh, this week is a good chance to to identify more with that than with uh, individual story and and interpretation of reality because uh, two people experiencing the same situation will filter the situation and the story differently so if we are uh, aware of that we we can use that to our advantage Okay, Anne has a good question. It seems like there are a lot of planets in fire and not any in air. If you are an air sign, how will that affect you? You guys are asking great questions this week. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we have fire and earth. And uh, you're right, there uh, is not much going on in air. Uh, that doesn't mean it doesn't uh, impact you because remember if we we project the, the chart of any given moment on top of your birth chart there will be a lot activated for you no no matter what i mean uh, so if it's not in the same sign like not in the air sign it uh, uh, will be uh, squaring or sextiling or uh, opposition to to something you have in your chart mm -hmm. so um, it's kind of easier to keep the planets in mind in the sign they are because if you uh, know my son is in Virgo and you know Jupiter is in Virgo it's kind of uh, uh, easy to know that this is influencing you so with the squares and opposition it's a little more tricky but uh, it's a good way to to always translate the whole chart on top of your birth chart so that's what i do when i for, do forecast readings i i have a double wheel i have your chart in the middle and i have the transiting plan planets outside and then i i discuss how the the influences through the aspects are so in a way, if you know a little bit of, about astrology and if you keep listening to these teachings, you, you're going to learn more and more. So you can do more and more of that on your own. Okay, anything more? Yeah, I, I know I was cutting out there for a moment, but... Uh, Okay, my dears, it's always great to uh, see you here on Sunday. And uh, I wish you a wonderful week. Just stick with your uh, witness function and you should be fine. And uh, very empowered in how you are able to surf the wave. Okay, my dears, namaste, aloha from Maui and uh, all the best to you. See you next week.